And after the corporation pathetically capitulated for uh, by allowing Gary Lineker back on air, do you believe uh, the BBC is impartial? That's what we're asking tonight. Send me your thoughts to dan at gbnews.uk. Tweet me at gbnews. I'll poll running there too. Cannot wait to bring you those results shortly. But first, to tackle this issue, let me bring in former England footballer and respected pundit Matt Letizier and ex-Premier League striker Dean Windass. So, Letiz, my goodness, I've been looking forward to talking to you about this for the past couple of weeks. I've obviously <laughs> seen some of your comments referencing the fact that maybe the BBC is wrong to back Lineker in this way, given he's not exactly an angel uh, in your words. But what do you think now, after the fact that they have reinstated him, does this now prove forevermore that the BBC can no longer say they're an impartial organisation? Uh, well, firstly, uh, even in Dino, how are you, mate? Um, and secondly... Um, I think you're absolutely right. The BBC, for me, hasn't been impartial for a very long time. Uh, I think this just confirms it. It was no big surprise that, that Gary got his job back. Um, let's be honest, if he had said those things as somebody on the right-hand side of the political spectrum, uh, I think we can all be pretty certain that uh, there would be no job for him now. Uh, there, are, there are rules for thee, but not for me, uh, unfortunately. And the, the BBC over the last few years have had zero amount of debate, zero amount of balance on their channel over the last three years. The, their reporters in the press conferences um, uh, where Boris Johnson was, was being questioned have been absolutely ludicrous. Not a single one of them asked a pertinent question which any member of the public would have wanted them to ask. Uh, and they are a sham of an organisation and have been, in my opinion, for, for quite a long time. Well, indeed. Indeed. And I, I, I would say, Matt, uh, they never provided any freedom of speech for folk who questioned either the lockdowns, uh, the, the vaccine, the COVID vaccine. They haven't given any platform for the vaccine injured. And they've also been incredibly one-sided on the trans debate. So all of that I hear. Uh, but Dean Windass, you're saying actually they're right to have forgiven Lineker and Right and Sharer and all of all of the other pundits. Why? I mean, they didn't even bother to turn up for work. What? Why should they be forgiven? Well, I, I, I'm not saying there was right about what what Gary had done. That the, the one thing I was confused about was that does Alan Sharer and Ian Wright agree with Gary, or do they disagree with the BBC that the the, the, the suspended Gary? Good question. And, you know, they've gone away, they've gone about the wrong way about it in the first place. I think they should have they should have they should have done match of the day and then dealt with it afterwards. But I think that, listen, the, the, the world's a mess as it is, isn't it? And, you know, there's, what, 500,000 asylum seekers in the country and the NHS, it's on his knees. And, and you know, so where, where are we going to put these people? That's, that's, that's my confusion. And obviously Gary's come out on his tweet. I, I totally agree with, with, with Tiz. You know, he, he got treated in the wrong way. So why is, why is Tiz different to, to Gary? But... You know, it's, it's just a strange one for me. It's a very strange one. But you still think the BBC was wrong to take Gary off air? I do. I do for, for, the, for the couple of days. I thought that maybe they should have played match of the day um, and then dealt with it afterwards. But the four days has been a car crash in a sense of what's gone on and what's been said. You know, if you deal with it after the show and then, then you've got sort of a week to, to sort it out for till obviously till the next match of the day appears on the screen. But, you know, they've de I think they've dealt with it the wrong way. And obviously, Gary's, Gary's had his opinion. And obviously, um, you know, does Alan and Ian agree with his opinion or does he agree with... They agree but with, they do uh, agree. Don't, but, Latiz, isn't this the point? They do agree. And actually, I think, uh, by all of these presenters walking off, they've actually proven the point that someone like B has been making for years. They do all think the same way because I'll give you another example, which is football related, taking the knee. If you tuned into match of the day, uh, you would have thought that there was a monolithic way to think about this. You would have thought that 99.9% .9 of Brits believed that the BLM organisation were right and that the knee should be taken before every football game. The BBC didn't allow any debate over that significant culture war issue. And I think that's why they've got to be incredibly careful with impartiality because it does bleed into football coverage. Football is such a big part of our nation and so many of our big debates about where we're heading as a country do involve football. 
Yeah, and I think as well, um, you know, the, the, the monologue that Gary gave when the World Cup opened as well. Mm. Um, I mean, if, you know, if you're meant to be, uh, you know, not biased in any way, shape or form, um, then uh, they should have steered, steered clear of that. I mean, if Gary was that bothered, he probably would have turned down the money from, uh, from going to work at the World Cup. Um, but, you know, that's, that's his prerogative. Uh, he's got to uh, put his head on the pillow and, and sleep at night, uh, and that's absolutely fine if he can do that. No problem at all. But And I've always defended Gary's right to, to free speech and having an opinion yeah, yeah. As, long as, he's, as long as he's not breaching his contract. And that's the big point. And I think that's what the point that should have been made is that, is that we should have been able to access uh, the details of his contract so that we could see and we could tell for ourselves if he had breached uh, any, of the, uh, any of the clauses in that contract. And if he had breached them, then that's a sackable offence. Well, the point is, he has certainly breached the published social media guidelines of 2020. As part of signing his BBC contract, he had to sign up to those social media guidelines. And that's the point for me. He chose to sign up. I don't give a damn if, if Lineker wants to spend all day, every day, tweeting anti-Tory talking points and comparing them to the Nazi party. Just don't do it while you're working at the BBC because you're turning the organisation into a joke. But look, can we just speak about Gary Lineker personally? Dean Windass, why does he have so much loyalty from the sporting world, from the footballing world? Why were so many people prepared to walk out in solidarity? What is it about Gary Lineker that holds so much sway among so many sporting folk? Well, obviously, certainly he's the, the, the highest paid pundit, obviously, on TV. So has he, Is he has a he good man? Power? Pardon? Is he a good man? Um, I've, I've, I've only known, known him as a, an ex-footballer. Matt, Matt probably knows him more than I do, but <laughs> you know, he, seems a, he seems a gentleman. But obviously, what he's, what he's come out with is obviously massively controversial to what's yeah. gone on now. All his mates have been loyal to him. You know, and that's that's fine. That's that. That's Alan Alan and Ian's opinion. But let, well, like Littas, I said earlier, the Littas, what do you on his what, knees. what do you think it is, Litters? Is is he a good man, Lineker? Uh, it depends how how you want to define that. Um, I think he's probably done um, some good things in his life, um, but you know, like everybody, he's probably done some uh, rather bad things in his life. Uh, a lot of people who do those bad things, they get. Um, highlighted in the press. Um, Gary seems to have some influential friends in high places, uh, which manages to to keep those things out of the press um, a, a large majority of the time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious to me uh, what's going on. Um, and it shouldn't take a genius to work out so uh, a- why, why everybody stands in solidarity with him. So there's been a conspiracy of silence amongst the mainstream media to protect Gary Lineker because they agree with his politics, effectively. Um, quite possibly. Quite possibly. OK, absolutely fascinating stuff. Matt Letizia, Dean Windass, great debate. Thank you for being here.